Things are getting pretty bad in Ukraine right now. Malware that might be worse than ransomware may have just hit the government among other entities. And this comes at an incredibly bad time. And we'll talk about the context after we talk about the malware itself. On Friday, multiple sites belonging to the government of Ukraine were defaced. Now on the surface, defacements aren't necessarily that big a deal. They're very public, so that's really where a lot of the concern comes from. But as far as inherent back-end destruction, nothing really happens with defacements. However, according to one Ukrainian official to AP and Reuters, that might have actually been a distraction for this attack. We've now learned of multiple government agencies from the government of Ukraine, as well as an IT company and other nonprofits, they've all been impacted by a very malicious kind of malware that is destroying devices. This also unfortunately ties into my 2022 predictions video where I predicted that ransomware, supply chain attacks, and nation state hacking are the top three threats for 2022. We've already had a ransomware event with the final site attack. We already may have had nation state hacking with the website defacement. This may also be part of that as well, but this also appears to be a supply chain attack. Microsoft released a couple posts. One was just a general blog post talking about what's going on, but then they also released a technical article detailing a lot of the details about this malware. They're calling it Dev0586. And although they don't really go into any details on who they suspect the threat actor responsible for this malware and this attack is, they do go into pretty good detail about the malware itself. This may sound similar to ransomware in that it is corrupting files on a file system. However, ransomware really is designed to get the ransomware gang paid. In that case, they build a lot of software and mechanisms for the targeted individuals to be able to reach out to the ransomware gang to pay the ransom and get access back. In this case, the malware is just overriding the file systems that it's targeting and not encrypting them. It also doesn't really include that much of a mechanism to be able to contact the attacker to be able to pay any kind of ransom payment or get any access back. This is a destruction mission, not a ransom. Now, what exactly is being targeted? This is where it gets particularly nasty. According to Microsoft, this attack is divided into two separate stages. In the first stage, the malware targets the master boot record, which is responsible for loading the operating system on your machine whenever you start your machine up. The second stage targets other kinds of files on your machine, and they include a long list of file extensions that might all be targets from this malware. In all cases, it's overriding pretty much any kind of file that's in these file systems and also overriding the name of the file itself, making it virtually impossible to be able to recover anything. You, it's Again, it's not encrypting anything. It's just straight overriding it. And in the case of the master boot record, if that gets corrupted, then your device won't be able to turn back on and load the operating system. So what it effectively is bricking machines right now. They also specify that this malware executes whenever the machine powers down, which is typically the response to ransomware outbreaks. Whenever the Colonial Pipeline shut down, it wasn't because the actual systems that control the pipeline itself were infected, it's because Colonial shut those machines down to prevent the spread. After all, if a machine is turned off, it's no longer networked, so it can't really get any ransomware on it. In this case, if the machine is already infected and then you shut it off, you've bricked your machine. Well, not you, the malware. What you also may not have done is hit that like button. Now, in addition to all the other technical analysis, malware also doesn't really dive into any suspected threat group that it believes would be responsible for this attack. You can check that documentation down in the description. Now, this is where things get a little dark. And we realize this whenever we start to ask the question, well, how exactly did this malware get onto this machine? According to one Ukrainian official, this malware got on as part of a supply chain attack. And that can explain why so many government agencies and private and nonprofit organizations were all impacted by this attack. It's not yet known if any organizations outside of Ukraine have been impacted by this malware as well. But that said, this is unfortunately the third time that my, one of my predictions has come to play in 2022, where I said previously that supply chain attacks are gonna be a concern for 2022. Well, it's January 16th. We have 349 days left in this year as of the date of this recording. So we have a lot of time left for all hell to break loose. And we've already hit all three of the points that I laid out in that video unfortunately. 
that sucks. But how, how exactly is this dark? In the case of ransomware, threat groups are trying to get money and in some cases people do get hurt and it's not good. But in this case, if you look at the context around Ukraine, and we talked about this in the website defacement video, it really gets pretty bad. As mentioned in that video, and as you may already be well aware, Russia has currently stationed an estimated 100,000 soldiers on the border of Ukraine. Now we haven't exactly explained why that is on this channel yet. And I actually was trying to make a video about that, but the footage got corrupted. So I'm just gonna include it right now. But before I get into that, I do wanna specify that in the last video, I mentioned that Ukraine had already attributed the defacement to Russian hackers. At this time, it now appears that that was the result of Belarusian intelligence. Not that that makes much of a difference, but you know, that does count as a change. They also have not made an attribution yet on who's responsible for this attack. Though the Ukrainian official that previously uh, spoke with Reuters and AP appears to have implied that this might be the result of Russian intelligence. But now let's talk about the context around Ukraine. So we've already mentioned that Russia has a lot of soldiers stationed on the border. Let's go back in time. In 2014, the Ukrainian government was pretty pro-Russian. That was at least until the people rose up and overturned the government and installed a democracy. However, in the chaos that unfolded, Russia took the opportunity to annex Crimea, which is a large province in the south of Ukraine. They may have also attempted to annex other chunks of Ukraine, such as Donetsk and Luhansk. However, that really got stalled and has since seen vicious fighting between pro-Russian insurgents and the Ukrainian government. Now that has all kind of just existed in this state up until last year, where in the spring, Russia surged forces forward to the border of Ukraine, but then pulled back the soldiers, but left all the equipment at the border. They continue to iterate through this process to today, where now they may have around 100,000 soldiers on the border and their equipment. Now having combat power for deployed isn't necessarily an indicator of military action. What might be an indicator of action, however, is whenever logistics and support forces are included in that matrix. And that unfortunately appears to be the case here, where they have also for deployed a lot of logistical assets. Now, whether or not Russia is intending to invade or just launch a raid or what kind of operation they have planned around Ukraine, if any, they may not even do anything with Ukraine. It's not yet clear. However, for our purposes, where we're paying attention to cyberspace, it's particularly interesting whenever something happens, like a website defacement, that really may not necessarily be news. However, with the context of, you know, this massive Russian buildup, you know, that simple website defacement starts to look a lot more malicious. Now you take that and then you have a malware campaign that is actively destroying government and private IT systems. Yeah, that's getting, that's getting pretty bad. Now, none of that is to say that this specific attack was done by Russia. After all, neither Microsoft nor Ukraine have actually officially stated any kind of attribution for this attack. Although that Ukrainian official did imply that this could be the result of Russian military intelligence or the GRU, and this activity would be consistent with the GRU, otherwise known as Sandworm, right as of right now, that's complete speculation. So all we can really do right now is secure our networks, make sure that this malware is obviously not getting detonated on our devices and we're also just continuing to watch the space because if something bad breaks out it's not just going to impact Ukraine it'll impact the rest of Europe and really the rest of the world so with all that being said if you want to catch up on my 2022 prediction or the website defacement video check out either of these videos whichever you prefer also be sure to hit that like button so the YouTube algorithm can help this video raise awareness about this issue and if you're watching this and you want to interact with some excellent professionals be sure to join the Republic of Hackers Discord. There's a link down in the description of this video. See you next time.